Welcome to Chevy Hometown Kids. I'm your host, Emily Reppert. Take a trip with me each week as we explore youth sports and the great outdoors all throughout the Southwest. From rising above a challenge to standout athletes, we'll highlight the hometown kids who shine in their community. We're all about discovering new talents, trying new things, and having fun along the way. Today, we're meeting up with a standout baseball player, learning life lessons at a karate class, casting off at a Hooked on Chevy Kidfish event, and coming up next, we're taking a swim for a good cause. Our hometown kids are starring in the story, so stay tuned as the action gets started. making waves with a young Olympic hopeful who's swimming for a cause that's close to her heart. Tell me what happened today. Um, I swam in the lake for cancer research that all the money goes to cancer. Sammy Jo loves to swim. She enjoys being with her teammates and we travel to Keller every day so she can swim and um, compete. Well, I like the 400 I am the most. I mean, because it has like all the strokes in it, and I find that event really fun. It's 100 fly, and then it goes to 100 back, and then 100 breast, and then 100 free. So you do all the strokes, and you can like split it however you want. But two years ago, the competitive athlete was forced to slow down. In 2010, the summer, I was going into sixth grade. I went to A&M camp, and I woke up with a swollen eye. So I called my mom to see if it was like any allergies, but she said I didn't have any. So we went uh, from middle of June all the way until August thinking she had a sty or a bug bite or a silicone allergy. We just didn't know. We saw doctor after doctor after doctor. She started a steroid treatment and it actually the swelling went down, but as soon as we were supposed to go to Austin for the state swim meet, it swelled back up and the pediatrician's like, okay, we need to do a CAT scan. And what they found was a form of cancer called LCH. It's a bone disease that like eats away your bone and um, it can be found anywhere and um, usually it's people a lot younger than me. Sammy Jo underwent surgery, beat the disease and came back with more determination than before. It was pretty cool. She kicked a lot for a while because her eye was still like swollen and stuff and we helped her kick through it and she just swam a lot and we just kept telling her it was going to be okay and that everything would be good and she bounced back pretty fast. She was determined. She's like, that's it. I don't care if I have to swim in a lane by myself. I am swimming with the team. And why was it so important for you though to get back in the and keep swimming after all this. I felt like I needed to be with my friends, encourage them, kind of help my body out and stay like really healthy. And now the 13 year old is competing in Swim Across America to spread awareness and raise money for cancer research. Swim Across America is a national nonprofit uh, dedicated to raising money for cancer care and research. And Swim Across America Dallas is very specifically raising money for the phase one clinical trial center at the Baylor Savings Cancer Center here in Dallas. Sammy Joe competed in the one mile race and raised over $7,000. She's a little spitfire. She's a heck of a swimmer and she had a little bit of a health scare about two years ago and she decided now that she's out of the woods on that that she was going to dedicate this swim here today to uh, raising money for Baylor and raising money for the uh, cure against cancer. You know she's an inspiration I mean she's a cancer survivor you know is out there battling cancer plus she's going to you know one of America's up and coming stars so it's really nice to be able to be out there swimming side by side with them and knowing that we've kind of been in you know our time and now it's the next generation that's coming up and and this year specifically we've done a great job at getting a lot of kids engaged you know I mean they should learn about giving back and they all are gonna be touched by cancer at some point in their lifetime so it's really nice to see them out embracing the cause as well and what would you say to other kids that may be suffering the same thing would you tell them that you know you can keep going and you can keep doing things that you love yeah I would totally tell them that because like with me I I fought it off um, they can fight it off too I mean they just have to be brave and go through with it 
And now you have some pretty big dreams ahead of you. What are you hoping to do? Um, one day I just really want to go to the Olympics and just kind of see what I can do there. It's amazing to see young kids like Sammy Jo overcome hardships and continue to succeed. I have no doubt she'll reach her goal. And after the break, we're headed to Abilene to meet a baseball player who's a leader on the field and an inspiration to his teammate and coaches. Chevy Hometown Kids is brought to you by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. My name's Hadley. My hometown is Odessa, Texas, and I like to give a shout out to my friends at St. John's School. Hi, my name is Sierra. My hometown is Sexy, Texas. I'm going to give a shout out to my friends and my grandma. Today we're catching up with a baseball player in Abilene who's overcome challenges in life, excelled on the field, and rallied his team to a whole new level. He just stays positive all the, throughout the game, no matter what, he's all, all, always happy. He walks around and he treats everybody great. He's never down on himself. He is a very good um, role model to have. 12-year-old Tyler is like most young baseball players. I play for the Pittsburgh Pirates, and I've always wanted to play majors since I was seven. But it's not his ambitious dream that makes him shine on the diamond. Well, Tyler has been a big encourager to our team this year to keep trying. Even though we didn't win a lot of games, we were always up. There was people on our team always picking each other up and well, we never got too down on ourselves. When times got tough this season, Tyler was there to encourage his teammates. He just stays positive all the, throughout the game, no matter what, he's all, all, always happy. Why is it important to have encouraging people like Tyler on your team? Because once one person gets down, they can bring the whole team down, but if you have that one person that can bring everybody up, it puts a spark into the team, gives everybody a motive to do better. But it's more than just his positive attitude motivating the Pirates to do better. He was born with his no fingers on his hand, and um, I thought, you know, it's going to be hard on him to learn playing sports with other friends, but he's showed me so much that he can do everything. I mean, I mean I'm so surprised. I, mean, I don't even feel like it's not even there. He learned to rise above his disability and never let it stand in his way. I used to not play baseball, and I used to sit around and do nothing all day, and then I had this idea I could play baseball and I thought it was going to be a good idea so I went to go tell my mom and she said that'd be perfect. He now plays baseball and football and has taught himself to adapt to the game. Well on his right hand he only has one thumb and he, he has no other fingers. He looks at that and he said he, he don't think anything about it. When he throws he takes off his glove and puts it on his hand and throws the ball with the same hand he catches with. And it's, it's pretty cool because he can play pretty much every position that everybody else plays. Throwing that ball so fast, I'm like, I was like, how do you do it, Tyler? And he just shows me, Mom, it's easy. I said, actually, I think he plays better, you know, with people that have two hands. I mean, he's, it's very surprising. It kind of makes it easier. Well, it is um, easier catching the ball with my glove and taking it off real fast to throw it. What did you guys think when he initially uh, joined the team and you saw that his hand was different than you guys? I can't believe he just comes out here and plays this wonderful game of baseball and plays it like he does. He's a, he's a great role model to all of us out here so he is a very good influencer to all of our teammates. I've watched Tyler for about five years now since he started in the farm system and the coach pitch all the way up to majors now. I've never had the opportunity to coach him and Coming in this year, and I've said it for the last few years, I've always wanted that opportunity. He's full of energy, great heart, gives you 110%. I couldn't ask for a better player and a, a better person to use as a role model to children and people that think, because I am this way, I cannot do this. He doesn't allow it. He, he is just who he is. And this season, his hard work paid off as he was awarded Young Athlete of the Year by the Abilene Youth Sports Authority. It was very good because he deserved that. He was very encouraging for everyone. He tries his best at everything he does. He was so proud of himself of getting that award. I was very proud of Tyler. I mean, how he showed sportsmanship and outgoing and very loving fun and all the hard work he has done. How have you seen him grow through this whole experience? Well, he could have easily said, I can't do this. 
and, and accepted his disability since he was a young child. But he's chosen not to and chosen to just play through it and not make it a distraction to himself or his teammates. And with his positive attitude and hard work, he hopes to one day achieve his ultimate dream. I would like to see myself in front of a million people playing baseball. And how do you think you're going to get there? If I keep on playing baseball and do my best and work harder, I think I could accomplish my goal. Tyler's story proves having a good attitude will take you far in life, and there's no doubt he's on the right track to success. And after the break is Know and Grow, where pros give us tips to make our game better. And this week, we're getting a baseball lesson from the Grand Prairie Air Hogs. Know a kid in your hometown that deserves to be on the show? Share their story on our website, hometownkids.tv, or tell us on Facebook. It's time for the Hooked on Chevy Catch of the Week. Each week we'll highlight a kid who's reeled in the biggest keeper at one of the many Hooked on Chevy Kidfish events across the state. Maria from Brownsville won the Kidfish Classic in Corpus Christi. She reeled in a 38 and 3 quarter inch redfish and took home the big prize. Way to go, Maria. Every winner gets an invite to next year's Kidfish Classic. We'll see you there. It's time to learn some proper baseball techniques from our Know and Grow Pro. I'm here with Greg from the Grand Prairie Air Hogs. Uh, Greg, what position do you play? Um, a little bit of everything, some third, first, and a little outfield. All right, and what are you going to show us today? Uh, first of all, we're going to uh, show some basic fundamentals of receiving a ball at first base. And what are some of the important techniques about this? Uh, the most important part starts from the ground up, so we're going to do some footwork and then uh, seeing the ball all the way into the glove. All right, great, let's get started. Hi, right, Seamus. Today we're going to learn how to uh, field a ball properly and from uh, the positions in the infield, okay? All right, so to start off, we're going to get in our ready position, which is going to be somewhere around here, okay? Now, as soon as the ball is hit, and once, you, once it's not to you, you're going to run to the base as quick as you can. You want to turn and face the field as quick as possible, okay? And if you're right-handed, you're going to put your right foot on the base, all right? And then find where the ball is coming from and step to the ball and then catch, right? Now the main reason why we step to the ball and catch is to keep from stepping this way and going like this, to fall off balance, okay? So it's real important that you get to the base, step on it with your right foot, and then step to the baseball, wherever it goes, okay? And then it makes it much simpler on you. You keep the ball behind your eyes, okay? You wanna give it a shot? Okay. So we're in our ready position, okay? Ball's hit, break to the base, foot on the base, step, catch, you're good to go. That's what you need to do. Want to see that tip again? Head over to our website, hometownkids.tv, to replay this lesson and to watch other known grows. And if there's something you want to learn more about, tell us on our Facebook page. But now we're going to meet an athlete who's teaching other kids about the sport he loves. Martial arts teaches discipline, builds confidence, and strong character. And today we're meeting a young athlete who's excelled at the sport and is now using his skills to help others. I do martial arts. I mean, I've been doing it for seven and a half years. 11-year-old David is a master at his art. David's one of our top competitors. He always wins gold at all of his tournaments. Uh, we just stepped him up to the expert division this year at Naga, so he's a real competitive kid. He's kind of one of our elite kids at the school. A lot of kids are just going to be willing to, oh, you know, okay, they beat me. I'm done. But uh, not David. He's going he's gonna to come back harder and try harder next time. I've been going to tournaments for a long time, pretty much a lot of wins, but a couple of losses, you know. But I learned from my losses and became better and won more. But this hard worker is gaining more than just gold through the sport. Well, you, you learn discipline, you know, you learn respect of other people. And uh, it's a great cardiovascular workout. Um, it's very good, uh, you know, we try to work on eating well. And, and teaching him to eat well. And uh, it definitely is a respect issue. You learn to respect other people more. You, you know, it's a one-on-one -on -one type thing, but it's, it's a fantastic experience, the martial arts. It's been very beneficial. The sport has taught him life skills that he's now passing along to other kids. I wanted to teach them what I learned so they could fight childhood obesity and um, 
be better in school. David and his dad started a program at the local library to teach karate and all the benefits that go along with it. It's a intro to martial arts program. It's like, um, teaches you self-defense from bullying, stuff like that. Tell me like some of the cool things that you do at the program. Um, you punch, kick, and break boards. We were talking about bullies and we were stretching and kicking bags and breaking boards. We start off with a, a PowerPoint presentation and we, we, we go over um, some of the bullying issues and statistics. So many kids that are bullied in school, they miss school, they won't go to the bathrooms because they're afraid to go, they'll get bullied there. They won't go on the playgrounds because they're afraid to get bullied there. You know, and uh, there's just, there, there's a lot of going on. With our, our program, it, it also includes not only those statistics, but we go into where to acquire good foods and healthy foods and, uh, and what not to eat and drink, so to speak. This program that he's doing at the library in Little Elm, is, it, it's really amazing. I was kind of skeptical about it at first. I'm like, you know, how's that, how's that going to work? How are you going to get people out? But um, it's been a really good thing. Uh, you know, he's teaching these kids, one, self-defense, two, how to avoid bullies, and, you know, just have the self-confidence to deal with them, uh, which is a huge problem these days. And uh, for somebody Dave's age to figure out a way to start combating that, it's just, it's just amazing. You don't see that a lot. And kids at all these days. He's teaching about nutrition and um, how to eat right, how to exercise, and you know, dealing with another big problem, you know, the childhood obesity. So, you know, j just a real special kid. So why do you care about this though? Why do you care about getting other kids active and off the couch? Like Michelle Obama, her mission, I kind of followed her because her mission was to fight childhood obesity and get active. So I tried to help with that. And the class has proved to be a success. This is teaching me to become more confident. Oh, I think it's great physical exercise, and it gives them uh, confidence, too. Any kid that wants to get involved with martial arts, be, I think it would be beneficial to them. It's been beneficial to us, and I've seen a lot of great results with other kids, and, and watch them grow, and watch them get a hold of their weaknesses, and, and gain and turn it and reverse it into strengths. And David hopes his message will continue to grow. I just want to, you know, do a class. I want to do it worldwide. It's like I want to make schools all around the world to help people. David's class is such a great way to get kids active and teach them about the benefits of working out. Now it's time for Chevy in the community, so we're headed to a North Texas Chevy dealership for a Hooked on Chevy Kidfish event. Chevy Hometown Kids is brought to you by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. Chevy runs deep. Looking for some family fun this week? Here are a few events happening in your community. The Zubli celebration kicks off June 29th in Waco. Explore everything historical El Paso has to offer at the Downtown Street Festival June 29th through the 30th, or cool off at Riverfest and Bandera. You can cast off at two Hooked on Chevy Kidfish events June 30th at the Stonebriar Chevrolet in Frisco or Britain Chevrolet in Greenville. And get a head start on celebrating the 4th of July at the Independence Celebration in Sulphur Springs June 29th through the 30th. And for more local events, visit the Hometown Happenings page on our website, hometownkids.tv. Fish events are happening all across the state, but you don't have to go to your neighborhood pond to check one out. They're also happening at Chevy dealerships, and today we're going to check one out. So tell me what you're doing. I'm fishing for catfish. How have you been doing so far? I've caught two fish. Kids and parents gathered at their local Chevy dealership to reel in a keeper. North Texas Chevy Dealers has put on the Kid Fish program uh, to help you know introduce kids and, and families to the outdoors and, and some of the fun, exciting parts that we have with that. Hooked on Chevy Kid Fish events happen all across the state to bring communities together. Basically, it's just allowing us to reach out to the community and invite a lot of kids out and families and take part of you know, catching some fish for free. 
and Chevrolet hopped on board two years ago to help grow the program. The biggest reason that we decided to do it is we feel that there's a need to introduce kids to the outdoor environment and also show that Chevrolet is, is definitely a, a partner with the community. We think that, you know, being able to do this type of thing for, you know, the parents and their kids around the, around the area is just really, really a great thing. And, and uh, we're always trying to contribute and, and you know, this, this type of thing is fun. And so it's real, it's real relaxing and uh, so we're just out to have a good time today. It's fun. It's exciting. I mean, kids, these big, huge smiles on their face, I mean, it's, it means a lot. And what's it like to see kids actually out here catching fish? Oh, it's a blast. You know, one of the neatest things is to see them, you know, try to pull in a big fish. You know, it's the first time a lot of these kids have ever done that, and it's pretty exciting to watch them do it. So what was it like to see your kids catch their first fish? It was exciting. It was really exciting. What about for them? How did they react? Uh, screaming. <laughs> So they were excited. And whether they're reeling one in for the first time or an old pro, Kidfish events are fun for the whole family. Uh, it's exciting. Uh, like I said, they've never been fishing before, so this is a fun event um, since it's summertime for the kids to come out and just have a good time. It's a Saturday event, and we get to do it together as a family. Now, why is it special to create this event for kids and parents to kind of enjoy together? Well, you know, you know, in today's society, with the way things are, and everybody's so busy and it's so hectic, uh, you know, it, it's great to have some sort of an event to be able to gather your you know, families to come out and, and just enjoy the day. Tell me why it's cool that Chevy puts on these events. Because it brings back to the community and it allows a lot of families to come out and do things and spend time with their children. Well, you know, there's not that many opportunities for a lot of, uh, you know, dealerships to, to get involved with the community. And, and this, this really does give us a chance to do that. So it's, it's really great, great opportunities for us to, to, to just be part of the community. We like to be a, a, a real mainstay as a part of our community and and you know we really believe in, in the, the families and the parents and you know the, the owners that we've sold over the years and that come back to us and the loyalties that we we want to give back to our community and this is just one of the ways we try to do that. Why would you encourage other families to come out and try one of these events? Well the girls are having a great time and that alone is um, incentive to bring them out um, definitely just because it's a good way to spend you know a couple hours or whatever in, on a Saturday but um it's better than, again, you know, them being in front of the TV. <laughs> That's all for today, but if you want more Chevy Hometown Kids, make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter to keep up with the show during the rest of the week. And remember, hometowns are where today's beginners become tomorrow's experts. So if you know a kid in your community who deserves to be on the show, tell us on our website, hometownkids.tv. And join us each week as we meet more hometown kids and hear their inspirational stories. Next time, we're meeting some nationally ranked archers, serving up a game of volleyball, headed to the lake for water skiing, and exploring the great outdoors while learning to kayak. We'll see you there.